know if you've ever had trouble finding clothes to fit. Um, I, uh, I can tell you I've struggled with it over the years with long sleeve shirts and coats. This is the reason. Uh, finally can find things, uh, but just not off the rack. So I think we all feel better when we have clothing that fits. We, we're comfortable, we maybe are more confident, and I believe the same is true of our lives as followers of Jesus Christ. And so I've entitled this, Does It Fit? Does It Fit? Uh, Charles Stanley uses this term quite a bit when he talks about the things that we think, say, and do that need to line up with being a follower of Jesus Christ. We, we'd be thinking like, will what I am planning to say, do, or think be pleasing to Jesus? Will, what I, will it reflect on His leading in my life? Will it reflect His sacrifice for me? I mean, in other words, did Jesus die on the cross so that I could say whatever it is I'm about to say or do? Will all of this reflect that I am His follower? Will it help others come to know Him? Now here's the reality. Oftentimes, even, even as Christians, we will uh, say or do something, and unintentionally often, maybe even intentionally sometimes, that will cause hurt, cause problems. Um, and we can say, well, but I'm not perfect. I don't know if you've ever used that. You know, I'm not perfect. Or that's just the way I am. And it's true, we're not perfect. Not a one of us. And, and yes, we come to Christ with all kinds of baggage. But is that what God expects from His people? You know, if there's, there's little to no difference between a Christian and a non-Christian, why, why become a Christian? There, there should be a difference. So the Bible calls for a change in our lives. If you look at verse 17, he says we must no longer live like an unbeliever. Now he used the word Gentile. And for, for the Jewish mind, there were two groups of people. There were Jews and there were Gentiles. And the Gentiles were, guess what, not Jews. And I think we could also substitute the, the, the term unbelievers as well. He says, the unbeliever lives in the futility of their minds. Use the term futility. I mean, this is a line of thinking that's filled with pride, self justification, worldly thinking, rationalizing everything we do, and making excuses. He says that they're alienated from God because of ignorance and the hardness of their heart. They live for whatever pleases them and never get a thought to the consequences or the impact it has on somebody else. You look in verse 20, he says, this is not what you learned about being a Christian. This is not what uh, it means to be a Christian. Verse 22, he says, you were taught to put away the worldly lifestyle, which he says is corrupt and deluded by deceitful desires. And then in verse 24, and some translations use the word clothe, but he says, clothe yourselves with the new self created in the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So, does it fit? Does it fit? Well, let, let's, first, let's first start with the negative. What does not fit? Well, if, in Colossians, I invite you to turn to Colossians 3, a, a few, a, a book or so over. And in verses 5 through 9, he goes uh, to say, put to death, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, our old self, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in those ways in the life you once lived. But now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices. We also think in Ephesians 5 of the, the works of the flesh. A lot of similar things here. And, and it's kind of like you go to your closet and you look at your wardrobe and you think, you know, that doesn't fit anymore. That doesn't fit. And you get rid of those. You get rid of those. 
He says, you used to be that way, but with Christ you should no longer act like this. So I, I, I was trying to think of some things, uh, a short list of uh, things that do these things fit? Do these things fit who a follower of Jesus Christ should be exhibiting? And it, it's a big list. Look at those. Now, if, if, and I'm sure we could all probably say and admit that we may see ourselves doing some of these things. But one of the things you notice is these are all about a relationship with other people. Our lives as Christians, we do not live in isolation. We live in relationship with people. And so are, are these the kinds of things that you would like uh, people that you like to be around? Is there anybody, is there anything on this list you'd like for your friends to exhibit? I'm trusting we say no. And is there anything on this list that we find ourselves doing at times that we ought not to? Does it fit? Does it fit? So, let's, let's move on. So what does fit a Christian? Well, here in uh, Colossians uh, 3, verses 12 to 14, this is from Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, The Message. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive and offense. Forgive us quickly and completely as the Master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It is your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Never be. So it, it comes back to, again, love. Agape love. So how do we do this? Well, when a person becomes a Christian, there is an exchange that takes place. Kind of like at Christmas, you know, you exchange gifts. Well, when Christ was on the cross, when Christ was on earth, there was this exchange. He took on humanity. And when He goes to the cross, He gives us His righteousness because He took on our sin. He gave us His righteousness. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not a very fair trade, is it? We got the best end of the deal. And as Steve said, it's grace. It's given to us. We have to take it. If somebody gives you a present, it does you no good till you accept it, does it? It does you no good until you open it. It really does you no good until you use it. And so Jesus came for this trade. So the idea of clothing ourselves happened when we trusted Jesus. So we accept Jesus and we put on His righteousness. So that's, that's the first step. But it's, it's a continual process. Just like every day we get up and we put on fresh clothes. And, and we start the day. We, we prepare for the day. Just the same way we get up every day and we, the, old, the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. We have to decide that every day. To, to let what we read in the Bible be applied in faith and obedience to our daily lives, our moment by moment lives. On our own we wear the wrong clothing. We need God's help. And if we're Christians and the Bible is clear, we have a choice to make. We choose to say, do, and think the things that fit a follower of Jesus. Now, th this is not a call to try really, really hard. Because a lot of times you can end up with moralistic sermons or teachings that say, just try harder. Just try, try, try. Try really harder. And it doesn't work. Because we can try but if we're doing it, okay, they say just try harder, so I'll do it. But then let something happen and we revert back to the deal default. We have a choice. We have a choice. But just trying harder never results in lasting change. And you think, well, why do we struggle? What, what, I mean, why do we struggle so much with following Christ or following self? It's kind of, what's the motivation for living differently? Well, it takes surrendering our lives, surrendering our hearts and our minds 
to Jesus to ask for strength, and then in faith make those decisions that reflect that Jesus is in charge of our lives. Surrendering. Colossians 3.15 and following, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Whatever you do, Whatever you do. And you know, whatever in Greek means whatever. Just like all means all. Whatever we do, we do it in the name of Jesus. So when we take on the name of Jesus, we are His representative out in the world. And, and people watch us. People see what it means to be a Christian by looking at us. But if we do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, there's a, there's a, a, a desire he says in 2 Corinthians 10.5, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And Eugene Peterson fits it this way, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. There is so much stuff rattling around in our brains, at least in mine, <laughs> and it needs to be shaped by Jesus. That's what this means. When we take every thought captive, we need to stop those things while they're still rolling around in our heads before they go out. So here, here are three things to think about. The first one, what or who is the most important thing in my life right now? What or who is the most important thing in my life right now? So it's like what is your priority or who is your priority? Next, how do I view and treat other people? See, as I said, here's the key. All, these, all that we're talking about is about relationship. How do we treat people? How do we see people? All of these things reflect our heart. And, and finally, how does the answer to those two questions reflect and fit in as a follower of Jesus? If I answer those first two questions, is my answer in line with the gospel? Is it, is it in line? Does it fit who a follower of Jesus would be? So here's the thing. Here's the thing. When we think of what Jesus did for us, when we think of what, so we leave the cross out. When we look at this cross, did Jesus go through that so that we could just live any old way we wanted? What did Jesus die for us to, to do, to be? Who did He die for us to be? Did He die so that we could do the things we often do? Will our lives be shaped by how much God loves us and, and revealed it on the cross? Does God love me? Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible and the cross tell me so. Will our lives be governed by the love of God? Will, will we love others as Jesus said? Love God with every fiber of your being and love others as you love yourself. Will love for others guide our thinking, our words, and our actions? Will love for others and gratitude to God shape our words, our thinking, and our actions? Does what we are about to say, do, or think, does it fit a follower of Jesus Christ? Only each of us can answer that question. We're going to close.